So, as everyone might or may not know, I've done security. I've managed a couple properties. I've done many stories. I've done all kind of things. So, I have a real, a real grudge. I guess you say love hate relationship with this chemical called methamphetamine. Uh, let me start out by saying a lot of the meth is shake and bake around our area because you know there's not a lot of money so you have to make it how you can get it so they will take bottles and they will mix batteries and acid and all kind of good things together and they shake it and it bakes it does a chemical reaction and sometimes it goes wrong but when it goes wrong it goes boom yeah boom so let me give you a little bit of hindsight. I was running a, a mini storage at that time. I, you know, was kind of doing my own thing. I'd used one of the mini storages. We was upgrading it, doing this, and we'd bought it. And they brought me on as kind of the security to do the cameras, to do, you know, get rid of the riprap, I guess you'd call it. I hadn't been there long, but I had me a little storage unit, and I'd run my internet out there and hook, you know, I could sit and watch the cameras and kind of around as a part-time security guard and I had me a little couch and a little desk set up there and I had electricity and you know it was a little one well I had a it was late at night and they had 24 7 access so come and go come and go well the unit I was in was a little bitty unit like I said and on one side of me was the same side of the unit on the other side there was a big unit it was a 10 by 30 I believe and it had doors on each end and I would hear people coming in and out, and I met the couple that had rented it, and they seemed like nice people. Something a little bit off about them sometimes, but they seemed like pretty nice, and that wasn't the worst riffraff I was having to deal with. Nowhere near it. So, I'm up there, and it's late at night, and you know, I hadn't took over the manager or nothing there yet, but I had, you know, just kind of done security, cleaning the riffraff out and getting rid of the you know some of the trouble some of the trouble let me put it that way so it was late at night and I was kind of lonely and you know kids was at home and they had school the next day and I'd been working all day and a friend of mine who happened to be my girlfriend at the time I guess you'd call her my girlfriend I don't know what she calls me now I can imagine what she calls me now but anyway she was up there and we was uh entertaining herself let me just say that so as I'm leaning back on the couch and she has comfortably positioned herself to entertain me you know you kind of relax a little bit and kind of get in the mood it's all quiet and I hear the people next door come in no big deal they know I'm there so you know I pull the door down and we're going about our business well, about 20 minutes goes by, so you know, no big deal. By this point, you can imagine I'm uh, wearing little to nothing, and what I am wearing is on my ankles. So, next thing I know, I lean back, my eyes roll back in my head, I sit back and relax and start enjoying myself. Boom! I think, dear Lord, this girl's done brought me to heaven. Well, then I hear screaming, and I, I'm like, what in the living bleep bleep? So I jump up. Of course, I pull on the thing I got on. I grab my blue jeans. I pull my blue jeans on. I go running out. Just enough time to see this girl come running out. The one unit. Both doors are up. Like I said, it's a walkthrough unit. Both doors are up. And I'll sit there and watch the chemical burn. And if you've never seen this stuff explode, people go, it don't explode. Yes, it does. And it's a, I want to say it's kind of like an invisible flame. It's a chemical flame. So I watch this girl. It melts her hair off the side of her head. Melts her all the way down. Melts her breast off. She's running around crazy. I don't know what to do at this point. I mean, I've dealt with, you know, chemical warfare and training and all that military and Marine Corps. So I don't know what to do, so I'm just like, let me call an ambulance. No, 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 I'll go to jail, I'll go to jail. Well, I look in her unit, and there's about 20 bottles. Her old man's picking up the bottles that didn't explode. 
throwing them in the car. He's on the other side. He comes around in the car. She's running back and forth all crazy. They get in the car, go running through the, driving through the mini stores. Can't remember the, the gate code. Can't remember nothing. I hear him honking at the gate, trying to, you know. So I open the gate remotely for my unit. They take off. So, of course, I had to do the legal responsible thing, not thinking about, okay, cops are showing up. You're a redneck. Nobody knows who the hell you are up here at down 2 or 3 o'clock in the damn morning. And you ain't wearing nothing but blue jeans. Classic cop episode. Meth blows up. Redneck dude. No shirt. No socks. Pow! So, anyway, cops, fire department, all that show up. The owner shows up. I can't figure out why they're looking at me. They're like, who are you? you know, the cops are, who are you? Why are you? And I was like, you know, I'm the security up here, part-time security. I do the camera system, blah, 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 and explain this. Well, the owner's wife looks at me. She goes, oh, you need to go put some clothes on. Me not thinking, cops. Well, here we go. So I go back, put a shirt on, put some socks on. And to this day, I never forget to look on that cop's face. He goes, now, let me get this straight. You're the security and these are the people that done it. And apparently her parents was well known around the area and they couldn't believe it. So that's how not to end up on a cop series. And by the way, yes, when it was all said and done, we got the car about four o'clock in the freaking morning, got everything cleaned up. And it's a mess to clean that mess up because you have to, you have to pretty much bring a crew in to clean that up. You can't do it yourself. So we get everything settled, we get in the car, we go back to my house. And I just, to this day, I just remember the rattle of that thing and watching her. And then hearing one of her buddies swear up down to me, it don't explode. Not even two weeks later in the woods, right below where I live now, we was at a buddy's house and watched a guy come out of the woods with the whole side of his face burn off. They put water on it, and as soon as they did, his skin and everything peeled off the side of his freaking face. And I asked him, I said, what the hell are you doing? Are you trying to kill yourself? He goes, well, I ain't got no reason to live. So, yeah, that's one of the crazy stories I can tell you. Anyway, that's another one of those mess stories, man. I told you I had some crazy ones. Till next time. Love. You don't care. Hit that bell so you can care when we are here.